Are owners of illegal initiation schools being arrested and prosecuted? Do all provinces conform to the draft policy of the customary initiation practice? What prompted the recent closure of unregistered initiation schools in Orange Farm and Soweto? What led to the establishment of the Provincial Initiation Monitoring Team? This is Question Time. Hello and welcome to Question Time. I'm Elvis Preslin, standing in for Port Sedu. Now, statistics indicate that more than 1,000 people have died and many more have been permanently mutilated at initiation schools in the past five years. Despite the high death rates and genital amputations, only 10 cases are currently before the courts. The National Prosecuting Authority is said to have confirmed that they do not keep records relating to initiation convictions. With the theme for the 2015 season being zero tolerance on initiation deaths, the Deputy Minister for Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Obed Bapella, recently closed a total of 17 illegal initiation schools in Soweto and Orange Farm and rescued 22 abducted initiates in the process. A very warm welcome to you, sir, and welcome. Thank you very question. much. Thank you. Now, if we look at this story, there is a reminder that you can call us and air your views before we go to the interview. For the, on the following numbers, you can dial 089-110-4210 or 089-27. No, I beg your pardon. 089-110-4210. Just a repeat of the number. And the Twitter, the Twitter handle is the following at question time. So you can share with us your comments to this debate. My guest today, as I indicated earlier, is the Deputy Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs over Pella. And joining us from the Eastern Cape is a Senior Manager for Corporate Communications at the Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Mamkeli Ngam. Welcome to you, sir, sir and welcome. Welcome to you, Elvis, and uh, good afternoon to Deputy Minister Obed Pella. Wonderful. You. Now, the initiation death toll in the country this year has passed the 20 mark. By this morning, 22 young men had lost their lives in the quest to graduate from boys to men. Yesterday, a number of boys were rescued from illegal initiation schools in Soweto. One is still missing. This used to be an illegal initiation school situated at the top of a sandy mine dump. It was torched by Midlands community members. Beneath the ashes, sharp objects are found. It is unclear what it was used for. Since the initiation period started, there have been many incidents, including the abduction of young boys. Of all provinces, the Eastern Cape has the highest number of deaths. This includes 12 initiates from the OR Tambo district. Of all the incidents, there is only one record of amputation. Limpopo has recorded two fatalities, while Mpumalanga has recorded only one fatality. According to the health department, the deaths are a result of circumcisions being performed by inexperienced people. Many hospitals in the Eastern Cape are reported to be running out of beds. It is vastly rural and has got very bad terrain. And the second reason is that they had more deaths than any other district in the past season and that they have more illegal or unqualified say, uh, traditional surgeons. The department has set down regulations to govern initiation schools. One of the rules stipulates that an initiate must be 18 years old and have full support of parents or legal guardian. But most initiation schools ignore this requirement. The department says it will continue to clamp down on illegal initiation schools until all of them are rooted out. Now, a reminder that you can call us and air your views on the following number, 089-110-4210. The international number just uh, for you to remember is 00278911. 4210. Now, question time will be back right after this, so please don't go away.
from humble beginnings, this selfless icon altered the history of the world, freed a country, and united a nation. He taught us humility and forgiveness. To the world, he is Nelson Rolihlahla Mandela, but to us, he is simply Tata Madiba. Welcome back. You're still watching Question Time. Now, we are starting our conversation with the Deputy uh, Minister here in studio with us. And, and there's a number of questions around this, around the, the, the traditional healers, around initiation schools. And you've closed a number of schools out in Soweto, uh, Deputy. Just tell us more about that. Well, yesterday we went to Soweto in Midlands on the uh, dumping mine areas where we closed the school. So that gives a total of 19 schools closed mm -hmm. in Gauteng and, uh, and then rescuing 99 children in totality. But then these illegal schools are in all seven provinces. Mm -hmm. It's only Northern Cape that did not report any illegal school, but all other provinces have indeed recorded Eastern Cape uh, being uh, number two after Gauteng. It's so shocking that Gauteng is now leading on the number of illegal schools. And then Eastern Cape mm -hmm. is number two. Now you must be concerned about this. What prompted the closure of these illegal schools? Well, it's many of the horrendous activities happens in the illegal schools. The botched operations that we report about, they also happen there because it's done by people who are not experienced. Mm -hmm. But secondly, I think there are those who are doing it for commercial purposes, for money and nothing, without love and care of the children. And then, then there are those who are just criminals who are out there to make money and, and nothing else. And, and that is why they were able to kidnap the kids. And unfortunately, parents don't report these incidences because after the kids are kidnapped, then people come and extort money from their parents. And the parents willingly give out money mm -hmm. uh, with the hope that the child will come back safe. But then you look at the weapons that we discovered here and you could just imagine what, what goes there through when they do the initiation and the circumcision there. Were the owners of these illegal initiation schools arrested? And uh, how many of them have been prosecuted in the past? Well, the number is not more than 10, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But also, as the National Prosecuting Authority says, they don't put it as initiation or illegal schools. They just say uh, culpable homicide or murder or assault with grovely bodily harms. And or also, it's a kidnap. Mm -hmm. But they will not then indicate kidnapped from what to what. Mm -hmm. So as a result, I think we don't have a category in the crime statistics that is called initiation or illegal initiations. Mm -hmm. The law is very weak around that. We can only find an illegal school. You cannot arrest them unless there's assault or unless there's a, a death that has occurred. But otherwise, if nothing of those things, even when we find a school, you could just rescue the kids and these people will walk free because there's no nothing that is criminalizing the illegal schools. Are you engaging with the prosecuting authority around this in terms of maybe changing the law to that? Well, we'll have to amend certain, maybe the Criminal Procedure Act where we can then put a schedule on the offenses that are related to illegal initiations mm. and also put in penalties there uh, into that particular law. But it must then go to the Minister of Police, Justice also, so that we could then agree on this particular issue if we are to fast track. Well, our, otherwise, we wait for the long process of coming up with the initiation law that will take a year or two, depending on the consultations that may then take longer, but the children will be dying. So I prefer the amendment of the Criminal Procedure Act because that's where the police ought to act and sentence people and, uh, and, and really for those to serve their sentences for the wrongdoing. Fanfare around the launch of the 2015 season of initiation schools, zero tolerance. What are you saying to that? We, we have now 24 deaths with the latest one reported this afternoon from Eastern Cape, uh, adding to the 23 that was there in the morning when we woke up. Yesterday when we were sleeping, we were 22. 
So Eastern Cape keeps on going up and it's a worrying factor. Last year, by this time, obviously, Eastern Cape was around the 40s. It's better this year, mm -hmm. but the death is but too much. Yeah. Uh, we shouldn't be having any deaths in these initiation schools. Talk to me about the customer initiation practice. Is all the provinces conforming to that? Well, every province has its own piece of legislation. That is why a new policy that was drafted by Minister Pravin Gordon, uh, which is up for public comments until the 22nd of July, mm -hmm. will then guide us in a new legislation that is going to be overall legislation for all provinces included. But the provinces will still have the specifics in the, in the sections of the law that then looks at the unique situation of the different cultures that exist within those particular provinces. But we must have national norms and standards that will then be prescribing. Now, I want to first have your take on the issue before we go to the Eastern Cape. But why do you think the Eastern Cape has got such a high number of initiates uh, that's dying? Well, there's an area in the Eastern Cape, it will be confirmed, obviously, uh, uh, called Emampondwen in the OR Tambo region. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they had not been practicing the, the initiation for many, many, many years. And then, but as a result of the stigmatization of the children when they are at school, yes. being called all sorts of names, mm -hmm. there's a pressure of young boys wanting to go out and they will just go to any person who says I'm available, I'll do it. And then, and then they end up in the wrong hands, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And then these people who are doing the wrong things will hide far away in the mountain areas, in the forested areas, so that they are not seen. And that's where a lot of wrongdoing is happening. Mm -hmm. So in areas where they've been practicing, you'll find out that the death is less or zero at some point. But in Mampondwen, in the OR Tambo region, I think is a most difficult area that we still have to do a lot of work with communities, with traditional leaders, with all the departments to really arrest. The, the death toll has gone down a bit, but it's still high. Mm -hmm. It stayed in just in one region in the Eastern Cape out of the, 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 the numbers that the Eastern Cape has recorded. Mr. Ngam, you are in the Eastern Cape. Uh, you're joining us from there. Uh, the, the Senior Manager at Corporate Communications at the Corporate Governance and Traditional Affairs. Uh, uh, Mr. Ngam, can you maybe give us an indication what is happening in your area and why is it so difficult to curb these deaths in the Eastern Cape? Uh, thanks, Elvis, for that question. And uh, I can uh, not agree more with the Deputy Minister on the reasons and the challenges that, that we are facing as a country and as a province in as far as the issue of tragical initiation is concerned. One of the reasons that we have been able to observe is the lack, um, or, is the lack or the non-establishment of traditional initiation forums in some of the areas uh, in the Pondoland area. Because the work and the function of the traditional initiation forums, it's a composition, it's an assembly, uh, composed of uh, traditional leaders, community-based organizations, sector departments, who would uh, crisscross a particular region doing monitoring visits to ensure that um, the initiates uh, in, the, in the bush are provided for in terms of uh, water provision, they are being taken care of in terms of uh, immediate referral to hospitals. Those who have got uh, chronic uh, illnesses are provided with those um, kind of medication. So our observation is that uh, in some of these areas, uh, like in Yandin, we um, saw that uh, there are challenges in as far as the functioning of the traditional initiation forums, which has resulted in the issues I have mentioned, because our observation is also that some of the initiates, they die en route from the bush uh, to the hospital. And uh, some of them have died as a result of dehydration. And they will also uh, witness a situation where as the deputy minister was saying, uh, the lack of parental involvement in the whole process is a, is a matter of grave concern to, to, to the provincial government and our department in particular. Because the issue of uh, initiation, it has to start with the parent, it has to start with the family, extend to the community and to the entire uh, rural locality to ensure that the community is also lending a, a hand to ensure that uh, the monitoring uh, thereof is done uh, effectively to ensure that our boys they go to the bush safe and sound and come back safe and sound as well. So the issue of uh, the non-establishment of uh, initiation, um, traditional initiation monitoring forums in, the, in some of these areas is a grave um, cause for concern to us. What are, some, what are some of the greatest challenges and obstacles that you find in the Eastern Cape? One of the, uh, some of the obstacles we are coming across as the province 
is the issue, for instance, we have observed that uh, around the KSD area, the greatest uh, challenge we're facing there, which is um, emerging at the moment, is the assault, the physical abuse of um, initiates. And they were trying to find a situation as to why are these initiates being assaulted. I remember last week when we visited um, a one initiation school in a Kotko village in KSD, the MEC for our department, MEC Tasa, has instructed the traditional initiation forum in the KSD area, for instance, to follow up on all the incidents or cases where initiates have been assaulted to ensure that uh, we get to the bottom of these issues. And uh, if we found out that um, there has been a foul play, perpetrators must be brought to book. Another challenge that we have been able also to observe in the Koko village as well, we found out that uh, in a school, in a particular school in the village, about 59 boys were camped in one house and they were being taken care of by four traditional nurses. And uh, that's a situation that we do, not, we do not want to encourage at all. And as a result of that kind of an abnormality, the traditional uh, surgeon or traditional nurse in that particular area was suspended to ensure that it does not have to conduct any act of circumcision in the area until the disciplinary hearing has been uh, mounted by the traditional initiation forum of KSD. As I was saying uh, earlier on, another observation is around the late referral of uh, initiates to, to, to medical institutions or to hospitals. Because uh, we encourage uh, traditional initiation forums, we encourage uh, parents, we encourage families to visit or to pay visitations to the initiation schools 24-7 to be able to, at a go, observe that a particular initiate has got a particular amen so that um, immediately that uh, initiate is referred to hospital. And those who have got uh, chronic illnesses are provided with their medication without fail. Because our belief is that, and our assertion is that, um, the medication for chronic illnesses has nothing to do with pain killing that some people claim it, it does have. So those are some of the issues that we observe. And uh, central to the, to, resol to the resolution of the challenges that we're faced with is the primary function or the primary role of parents to ensure that we put a stop or to we nip in the bud the current uh, death that is happening in our province. And also, the issue of the customary traditional initiation practice bill. We, we as the province, were of the view that uh, once a process um, of consultation has been done and it goes through the provincial um, <laughs> legislature and all the legal processes thereof are finalized, we will be able to, for instance, begin to say, as is contained in the, in the, in the, bill, in the bill itself, mm. anybody who operates an illegal initiation school, that person is committing a criminal activity. So we'll try and criminal, criminalize the issue of the operation of an uh, illegal initiation school. Mm -hmm. Also, our another observation Mr. Mr. is Mr. around the issue of um, a boy's youngest, 13 years old, getting circumcised. Yes. Anybody who undertakes or engages that kind of an activity should be regarded as a criminal and should be arrested and brought before the cause of law. So what I'm Wonderful. trying to say, the implementation of the uh, uh, practice bill, it would be another step in the right direction to mm -hmm. ensure that we are able to nip these things in the bud. As uh, the deputy minister was saying, we, it's we got a, another we got area of vulnerability, of weakness, when, when you talk about the issue of legislation and the arrest Mr. Ngam, that needs let's to be affected in these areas. Mr. Ngam, let's first take a break and we'll come back right after that to discuss the issues because there, there's a number of other issues that I would like to touch on, uh, uh, Deputy Minister, when we come back after that break. So you are watching Question Time. You can call us on that number. You can join that conversation on 089-110-4210. That's 089-110-4210. And we'll be right back after this. It's more tragedy for Nepal. A 7.3 earthquake struck the Asian country this morning. Frightened evacuees fled camps and health facilities when the quake struck. I think it's a really big hit of earthquake because the gate has also slanted and every pole are moving like that that they will fall again. And it comes barely two weeks after a 7.8 magnitude quake claimed over 8,000 lives. The country saw more of its historic buildings and temples destroyed. Yes. The country's president Ram Baran Yadav was addressing a meeting when the quake hit. 
Prime Time News daily at 6 p.m. CAT. Welcome back. You're watching Question Time. My guests uh, today are the Deputy Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Obad Bapela. And joining us from the Eastern Cape is the Senior Manager, Corporate Communications at the Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Mam uh, Mamkeli Ngam. Now, welcome back to the show. Let's continue with the discussion, Mr. Bapela, because we haven't got that much time. Uh, there is the establishment of the Provincial Legislation Monitoring uh, theme or, or team. Talk to me about that. What is that all about and will that assist? Well, they have been assisting quite a lot, both in Limpopo, Mpumalanga, and the Eastern Cape. Mm -hmm. And as a result, Limpopo is one of the best examples in South Africa. 28,000 children went in this winter, and all the 28,000 are coming back. That mm -hmm. is those that went to properly approved schools. Mm -hmm. None of them died. Those who died in Limpopo, the two, died from illegal schools, mm -hmm. uh, not part of those that went in. So therefore, the, this monitoring and, and the forums that have been established uh, are very, very helpful. In, 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 in Bumalanga, it's called the Ngoma Forum. It mm. did well, only one death. And then that death also was an external activity where somebody visiting saw a, 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 this other boy. And the head grudges, wherever they come, it just went and strangled the boy and killed the boy inside an initiation school. It was nothing to do with the initiation, had nothing to do with circumcision. So those are the forums that we think we need to encourage. But what is Limpopo and Mpumalanga getting right that the others, the other provinces are not getting right? And what leaf can we take out of their book? Besides the, the, the forums, the, the Mpopo has integrated, and I see the Eastern Cape is also doing that now, or the, the medical doctors that are from initiations themselves who are from there, who knows the practice, who are now professionals, uh, doctors, are being brought in. And the Department of Health is assisting us in paying them salaries for the days and the number of days that they are not in their surgeries, mm. so that they can then help and rescue with their rescue center, so that if anything goes wrong in the initiation, quickly the, the child will then be rescued there and then and be assisted, so that it does not lead to... To, to death as a result of, of, of blood, uh, losing blood and, and so forth. So I think Eastern Cape has just introduced it last year and I hope it will grow, it will be able to arrest the situation. Now Mr. Ngam, you earlier talked to us about the, the age limit uh, and uh, about for male circumcision and for initiation. What is the legal age limit for initiation? The, the legal age for any boy to undergo the ritual is 18 years old. However, as, we, as I alluded to uh, earlier on, in our province we find a situation where some of the boys, for instance, in the Bizana area are kidnapped and uh, they undergo the ritual under illegal uh, initiation schools. That is an area that we discourage as government and uh, also we encourage parents in such situations to consult the local police station and uh, lay a complaint so that the perpetrators can be brought to book. Now, Minister, um there are also taboos of uh, initiation schools. Are, are, are these traditional healers or the, the, the people in charge of, these or of the initiation schools being taken through the process and assisted by government? Well, uh, what we have observed is that the, the, the skill and the experience is now disappearing. Those old men who used to run these schools uh, without any incidents have passed on or they've now retired. And it's a new generation that is coming on board not enough experience on them and hence the health department is now coming up with a program to train and ensure therefore that they can then be experienced but secondly there's a male medical circumcision uh, which has now been also introduced in Limpopo they're embracing it gradually but they're getting there in Limpopo they're beginning to understand it going there in the Eastern Cape unfortunately it's been resisted we hope we'll engage on them to say the Asa guy might no longer be the appropriate weapon today mm -hmm. then let's then go the male medical scams which is just a tool that is modernized that can do it in a safe condition so that we don't have botched operation because currently 145 children are lying in hospital in the Eastern Cape. I'm going there tomorrow to go and see some of them in hospitals. I'll be there for three days. 
Deputy Minister, thank you so much for joining us and Mr Ngam as well in the Eastern Cape. Thank you so much uh, for watching Question Time for today. We, we ca we've come to the end. We couldn't even take your calls, unfortunately. A big thank you to my guests and for you at home for watching the programme. You're watching Question Time. My name is Elvis Preslin. We'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. Have a wonderful day ahead. Ciao for now.